What's on your playlist right now? I'm going to my class. Um... Go to guilty pleasure food. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> Bob's work is transformational in sort of every aspect of that word. His job title doesn't come close to explaining what Bob has done during his career. I think his biggest accomplishment was you know, what he often referred to as the new campus front door. So the Mandavi Center, the Art Museum, the Robert Mandavi Center for Wine and Food Science, I mean that was a surface parking lot with human resources trailers that was transformed into a way, using his words, to welcome people that often don't have a place here. People that may not be studying here, but can visit the university. I'll always remember the, the grand opening for the Mandavi Center. There was a moment where I just saw the building alive as Bob has described it. There were people on all three levels and really that whole Mandavi Center, I think Bob really was instrumental. And now he's done something terrific in terms of a, a vision for Aggie Square. Bob was one of the early supporters of the Aggie Square concept. Uh, I think he saw, as a planner, he saw the great possibilities we had with the space that we were gonna try to invigorate. The best part of our experience was when the pandemic started and we were sort of questioning how we would go forward, if we would go forward, if we would slow things down. And Bob and I agreed that the best thing to do was to plow straight ahead, and that was the right decision because it's worked out wonderfully. Most people aspire to leave a place better off due to their works, but, I mean, Bob has done that in volumes. Bob Seeger, welcome to Face to Face. Thanks for being here. Oh, that was fair. I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> got a couple of tears or anything like that? <laughs> yeah, 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 you got me. You got me. Well, we're glad to have you here today. Um, and congrats on the upcoming retirement. Uh, it's been an honor to work with you for the, the six years that I've been here. But, you know, the campus has enjoyed your services for 25 or more years, as I understand it. So uh, thanks for everything you've done for UC Davis. Yeah, thank you too, Gary. It's 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 been. I just my 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 main feeling right now is I just feel fortunate. I just feel so fortunate to have found UC Davis. It was uh, it was a match for me, and and I got to bring my best A game, and and uh, you know it was appreciated, and and uh, appreciate everything you've done to support me and give me opportunities to to lead. Well, we've been fortunate too. That's for sure. Um, Bob, when did you decide? you wanted to be an urban designer. Was that something early in your life or something happened in your career where you made that decision? Yeah, thanks. I, um, I went to, I was an undergrad at Stanford and uh, didn't quite find my perfect major there, but I actually made up a major and it was, it was called urban studies. And uh, I was looking for what I might do in graduate school. And I actually discovered Frederick Law Olmsted. And Frederick Law Olmsted was the designer of Central Park. And he actually turns out was the designer of Stanford University and you know, amazing parks and open spaces and, and even, even worked in Yosemite. And I saw that there was this profession, landscape architecture, environmental design, that uh, where people created, um, designed the world, designed um, the environments that we live in, uh, everything from natural environments to urban environments. And uh, that was it. So I went to graduate school at the University of Michigan in. Uh, Landscape Architecture, Environmental Design. So how did you get from Stanford to Michigan to UC Davis? So first job out of Michigan was uh, in San Francisco. Michigan was in a, uh, I grew up in the Midwest, uh, came to college at Stanford, went back to the Midwest to Ann Arbor for graduate school and probably would have stayed there, but um, it, was, it was early 80s. There, there were not many jobs happening in the Midwest at that point. And uh, friend from school had gotten a job in San Francisco um, and they were hiring like crazy. So uh, I, Jennifer and I packed up this little tiny Toyota and drove across the country. And we both started working in San Francisco at a big architecture and land planning firm called HOK. HOK actually in the, in the office, when I worked at, I first worked at HOK was the, um, was Meyer Hall on the UC Davis campus. They were designing that building. And, and since then HOK designed the, uh, the, the Vet Med 3 building. So um yeah, so that was my first job. When I was at HOK, a job came up on the Berkeley campus and uh, I got to be a project manager for that job. And I realized how much I, I really loved working on a college campus. Um, college campuses are the 
only environments really in our kind of contemporary landscape, Gary, where cars are all pushed out to the edge and it's just about designing places for people. Yeah. And uh, it's also designing places for people, students in particular, where, you know, at a, at a particularly impactful part of their lives where the environment matters. And uh, so, I, so I worked on that job and then I got a job at Stanford in their campus planning office for a couple of years. And then um, UC Davis came up and I've been here ever since. So that uh, early Meyer Hall uh, uh, exposure was kind of, it was meant to be, huh? Right, here you are. That's right, um, that's right. That was my glimpse at UC Davis. So you, you touched on this a minute ago, but you, you're trained in urban design, but you've been at a college campus for much of your career other than the, the moving the cars out, what do you think is different between being on a college campus and doing the planning here versus being in a, in a city? Yeah, I mean, one thing is, um, you know, it, it's, it's our environment to control, really. So, you know, I'm in a professional capacity working for you and others to, to make this campus everything it can be for our community. So for students, for faculty to do their work, for staff to do their work and for the many, many visitors that come. And, you know, I'm looked to for my expertise um, to provide the guidance um, to you and others about how, how to shape this place. And that's a really, really unusual opportunity. I mean, if you work for a city, you know, in the city planning office, there's lots of folks and they're facilitating, you know, community input about, about the whole thing. Uh, but, but when you work on a campus, you're really looked to to be the person that um, gives, gives guidance to, to shape the place. I want to talk about the campus front door. You know, I have to tell you, when Lachelle and I came here and we saw the museum and the Mandavi Center and the Mandavi Institute and, you know, uh, that Welcome Center and everything in that part of campus, it really did a lot to sell us on coming to Davis. Uh, tell us about how that evolved in, in your mind and how it actually got realized. Yeah, so that was a pretty amazing opportunity over a period of over 20 years. Um, when I started working, and I remember taking you and Lachelle around on, on a tour where we got to see that. That was the first time we met, which was really fun. Um, yeah, it used to be when you drove by UC Davis, all you saw was the water tower and you saw a row of trees, which was the Arboretum. And you know you, there was a sign, so you figured UC Davis was back there somewhere, but we didn't really have a presence for the public. And the very first project I worked on when I came to the university, was the Bueller Alumni and Visitor Center. And we decided literally to bring that building out from behind the trees and face it towards the freeway. We did a master plan for what became that whole gateway district, that whole front door. Um, and people asked me for years, why did you face that building the wrong way? Because the campus is over there. And we said, because we want people to know we're here. And uh, we, wanna, we wanna roll out the red carpet um, for all the people who come here for the first time either looking at the place to be a student or as a visitor uh, or to experience, to, to connect with somebody at the university. And so from there, the next big move was the Mandavi Center um, and the parking structure went with it. And uh, oh, so many stories about that. But uh, I just remember having the opportunity to take Robert and Margaret Mandavi. To, we took them to the top of the parking structure and the Mandavi Center, the steel was going up. And Robert Mandavi just kept saying, I had no idea that this university was doing this, you know, in this place at this scale, and and he threw his support to the project. Um, but the commonality of all of it, Gary, was um, putting really high public impact, high public access um, programs at the front door of the university, so people had a reason to pull up that freeway and come explore us and have a great experience. Yeah. Um, so there was the Madavi Center. Graduate School of Management, Mandavi Institute for Food and Wine, and then finally the Minetti Shrine Museum. And all of them, you know, are places that really people are interested in coming and exploring and connecting with. And, and that can only, you know, redound to the benefit of the university. Either, you know, if people get to know us and, and realize the amazing things that go on here, um, they're going to support us one way or the other. And, and that's really what it was all about. Yeah, agreed. And, and the museum, I think I have this right, was named one of the top 25 museums, not just museums at universities, but top 25 museums in the past 100 years. That's got to be mind-blowing, right? Um, it was. It was extraordinary. And uh, 
you know, it's interesting because the architect, uh, Florian Eidenberg, actually grew up in the Netherlands and uh, he did his research when he was interviewing for the building and he found this poster um, from the early 1900s where you could come explore, go up the Sacramento Delta on what was called the Netherlands route. You could take a boat up, up the Delta and he actually connected um, with the kind of physicality and the, and the, um, the territory that we're in from where he grew up in the Netherlands. And he just, he nailed, he got it right. He, he just had such an understanding of, of our place and, and uh, the, building, the building shows that. I agree. It really does differentiate us from other places. Um, now, uh, you and I have been working together on Aggie Square for the last five years or so. Um, in the intro, we talked about our conversation right when the pandemic started about what do we do? <laughs> but even before that, you know, I just had an idea. I didn't really have a, uh, you know, a, a vision that was on paper. But you uh, and you know, others, there's, there's a team, but you made that idea turn into what now is, you know, a couple of buildings going up. And uh, we just had a topping off ceremony uh, this week uh, for the first two buildings. So um, talk about that a little bit and how that uh, has, has evolved. Yeah. So, um, you know, you had the idea. I, I remember a meeting um, where we were getting briefed by some folks on the Sacramento campus about some early planning that they were doing for what became Aggie Square. And they were, they were realizing they, they should be thinking about expanding their research enterprise. And, and um, you saw it. And I remember, um, I remember the day where you were saying, can we call that, let's call that Aggie Square. And I think, I think you were doing your scan for, um, you know, is there a UC Davis appropriate version of what you experienced in Atlanta, right? Where the university becomes this generator of ideas and investment and community benefit. And uh, so, so I looked at the planning they were already doing in Sacramento. And honestly, what we were just talking about, Gary, the, the front door to UC Davis, the Davis campus, was part of what drove my thinking about this opportunity for the Sacramento campus in Sacramento. It's a completely different context, completely different neighborhoods, you know, big, big city, but it's our Sacramento campus's opportunity to do what we did in Davis to really kind of crack that campus open for the public and roll out the red carpet. So, you know, we want, so we designed the Aggie Square to be that welcoming public um, access point to the UC Davis Sacramento campus. It, 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 if it will succeed if people in our community feel like they can just walk on and explore because there might be something there for them. And right now it just doesn't feel like that. It's, it's, you know, it's extraordinary enterprise, but it's big hospital buildings, big parking structures. You go there if you need medical care. Aggie Square is about going there as a community member or an industry partner or a school kid and exploring the university and seeing what it can do for you. And so we that influenced the, the design of the place, yeah. uh, making sure it was open and had big public spaces and different buildings doing different things surrounding it. So all kinds of different people who come for different reasons run into each other. So really those goals about people feeling welcome and people finding one another um, drove the design. Is there anything about the project that gets you especially, especially excited or um, a favorite building or a favorite part of the uh, entire entire project? Yeah, I have to say, um, you know, when when you first kind of branded at Aggie Square, it was it was an idea uh, for the kind of this innovation district that you know would have all these different moving parts. But I, I think the thing I'm most excited about is that Aggie Square transitioned from becoming an idea to actually becoming a, a physical place. It, and so we have this public plaza uh, right at the heart of Aggie Square that um, is surrounded. Every single building in the project has a front door that, that empties out onto this Aggie Square Plaza. And there'll be events and there'll be, again, people running into people from different walks of life that they never would have met. And that's how innovation happens. So yeah, so being that landscape architect, kind of urban designer instead of an architect, to me, it's the public places yeah. that really create the life of the community. And it, it just, so the exercise is what do you surround those public places with so they come to life and, and, and again, people, people connect with each other. Yeah. And, and same question, bigger scope. When you look at your whole career here at UC Davis, 
25 years. Is there a moment or uh, a project that stands out to you or something you're particularly proud of? Well, gosh, there's, there's so much, you know, I've been thinking, um, I, I really, I have a story every place I go on the campus, either a story of something that, that we made happen and changed or something we just, we preserved and, and, you know, a treasure that people want there um, for the ages that, that we were able to, to preserve. But I mean, you know, I have my, I have my Mandavi Center moment, um, you know, that I've shared with you um, where, uh, where my daughter Andrea got to be um, the first solo performer in that building when it opened. And, you know, that just still, I mean, I, I, I can't tell the story without just my heart pounding because it was, it, was it was a surprise. I didn't know what was gonna happen. And Chancellor Vanderhoof at the time made that happen and gave this opportunity to, this, to my daughter. She was 16 years old um, and it was just extraordinary, just extraordinary. So I, I you know, I, um, so connected with, with the camp, so many life moments connected to the campus, but that one, that one really jumps out. Yeah, um, it's very special. As, as a girl dad, I get it. I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have an aspect of face to face that we call hot seat. It's a little feature that we do every time where I give the guest uh, a question and I look for like a one word or one sentence answer. Um, if you're ready, we'll do that. How's that? Sure. Sound? Okay. Here we go. Uh, favorite city in the world from an architectural point of view? Uh, Florence. Florence. Italy. Yeah, I, I agree. I like Florence. Uh, biggest surprise in your time here at Davis? Well, that was the one I just mentioned. Okay. That was that was getting surprised by my daughter coming on stage. Yeah. Can't imagine how that felt. Um, who would you like to sit down and have dinner with, alive or dead? That would be uh, that would be this Frederick Law Olmsted guy because, you know, yeah, designer of Central Park, but the reason he did it, oh, I'm, now I'm going to more than one word. That'd be the guy. But he did it because he, he created these places because he felt like these big open spaces in cities were how you promoted social health um, in these big urban cities. So, yeah, a fascinating guy. Right. Um, favorite spot on campus? Uh, Arboretum. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I ask this question to every guest. What artist is at the top of your playlist right now? Um, there's actually a group called uh, the Mavericks that uh, I've been enjoying a lot. Okay. Um, now it's your turn. You get to ask me a question. Ask me anything. All right. I've got one. Um, I know when I was, before I even met you, when I was first um, reading about you coming to, to Davis, um, I read about um, how important mentoring is to you and, and some of your experiences around that. And I'm wondering, um, you know, was there a time in your life or an event or a person who made you kind of make that transition from looking for a mentor to realizing that you could be a mentor? And was there something that, that, that you would point to? I don't know if I can point to one. You know, I, I, mentoring is so important. Uh, any leadership role, Fortune 500 CEO, higher ed, government, whatever. Uh, if you ask that person uh, in the leadership role what was most uh, uh, impactful in your life and career, somebody's going to they're going to say a mentor uh, had some impact on them. Same as for me. And I just started thinking, you know, I'm I'm not going to be doing what I'm doing forever, and I've got to help the next generation of whether it's professors or deans or chancellors or whatever it is I'm doing uh, to develop. So I think it's important uh, for me to do that, particularly uh, in my case, I think um, I'm sensitive to doing that for underrepresented folks like myself uh, and, and and helping them sort of see what they can be. Uh, there was a quote from the Surgeon General, former Surgeon General, Joyce Lynn Elders. She said, if you can't see it, you can't be it or something like that. If you can see it, you can be it, uh, put it in a more positive way. And that's kind of had an impact on me. Any any other questions for me? Well, yeah, I, I do have another one. I, I mean, we were talking about Aggie Square, and that's that's really we've spent so much good time together um, over the past few years on on getting the project to this point. Um, so if we fast forward to the future, and Aggie Square is open for five years and it's thriving, um, what what does that mean to you? What would you be seeing if if Aggie Square is is is, is hits all of our goals? It's, it's cr pretty similar to the scenario you described. It would be people in the square, people having conversations, people that don't necessarily 
normally see each other bumping into each other and something good happens, whether it's an idea for a company or a new research project or, or whatever. And um, it's uh, uh, an area that's viewed as sort of a thriving focus for, for the city, for Sacramento. Uh, all sorts of events happen there, whether it be uh, events around you know, entrepreneurship or just entertainment or other types of things that happen in, in the public square, as you said. So if that's happening and they're, we're bringing people and ideas and talent and companies to Sacramento, that's uh, a success for me in terms of Aggie Square. Thanks for being here with me, Bob. I, you know, the word transformational is overused, but I really think you've had a transformational legacy for this campus, and uh, I thank you for that, and we all do. Um, we wish you the best in this next phase uh, of your, your life, and don't be a stranger. Please come back and visit as often as you would like uh, after retirement um, and tell us how, how, how we're doing. <laughs> uh, and, you know, to everyone else out there, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Face to Face and Go Axe.